the absolute best thing that you can do for your skin, hands down, is to wear sunscreen every day. If it's light outside, you pretty much need to be wearing sunscreen. So today I'm gonna to share with you the collection of sunscreens that I have in my own arsenal and the ones that I use every single day. Let's check it out. Are we going? Okay, We're so going. far so good? We're going. Okay, okay. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for joining today. And if you're new here, I'm Mary, I'm 50 years old, and I love discovering products, devices, methods, anything that's gonna help me look as young as I feel. Now, this is an exciting one because today, in the US anyway, it is National Sunscreen Day. So what better day to talk about my favorite sunscreens. If you've been to this channel before, you have heard me bang on about this particular topic over and over and over again, because everybody should be doing it. It is something that we can do to prevent damage to our skin. Now, I didn't have that luxury. I grew up in the 70s in Florida, and we didn't have sunscreen then. We just didn't have the education. We didn't have access to products. So in my day, we didn't have sunscreen to prevent from sun damage. We had suntan oil to bring it on. And I was dark, I was young, I was in the sun all day long and I would just lather this stuff all over. It was Hawaiian Tropics tanning oil and I remember the smell of it. It was coconut, it was just heavenly and, and I shouldn't have been doing it. <laughs> but we just didn't know that then. And to make matters worse, I just got tan, I didn't burn. So it looked like everything was fine and it wasn't until I hit my late 30s and early 40s that I started to see the effects of that damage that was really, really deep into the skin. So the one thing I want to emphasize guys is that tan skin is just burnt skin. It just looks better. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you are literally frying your skin. So I am going to put it out there that you shouldn't be tanning. So if you want the effects of a nice tan, go get some self tan. There's some great products out there in the market that can give you that look, that can give you that golden glow without actually harming your skin. So just step away from the laying out and trying to get that tan in the sun. Now I'm gonna be honest, I'm surprised that we're still having to do so much education about this and so much persuading of people to wear sunscreen every day because it's a pretty basic thing. I think if you're old enough to be buying lip gloss and deodorant, you, you should be putting on sunscreen. It, it kind of is as simple as that because we need to take care of our skin. So in fact, I just did a recent video and I will put a card up here and I will also put details in the description bar below. The 10 things that I wish somebody had told me in my 20s. This is the stuff about taking care of your skin when you're young. This is the very tippy top of that list. It's the only thing that you should be doing if you're looking at entering into a skincare. If you're only gonna do one thing, this is it. Put that sunscreen on. I think people sometimes forget that our skin is our body's largest organ. It has a really big job to do. It's the first line of defense against all the baddies out there, germs and toxins and pathogens and UV rays, all the bad stuff. Its job is to keep that stuff out. So basically its job is to keep all the bad shit out and all the good stuff in. <laughs> okay, so one of the best things we can do to protect our skin is to keep the UV rays out. So basically two types of UV rays, there's UVA and there's UVB. UVA is, stands for aging. UVB stands for burning. So the UVB rays, those burn rays, really are what lead to cancer. So you need to stay away from those completely. And the UVA rays go deeper into our skin and that's responsible for premature aging. Now it also contributes to, um, to skin cancers as well. Um, UVA is even a bit more dangerous because it can penetrate anything. So people constantly say, well, I wear sunscreen when it's sunny outside. No, it doesn't matter if it's sunny outside. Particularly the UVA rays, they can go straight through clouds, they can go through glass in your house. So it's sort of this idea that, it, let's just say it's not a sunny day outside or in the middle of winter and you don't get a lot of sun, which we certainly don't here in Ireland. It can be pretty much great for months. But you know what, my house plants are still surviving. And that's generally an indication of light getting in because they need light to survive. So if your house plants are living, then you need to be wearing sunscreen, simple as that. So what's gonna protect you from both the UVA and the UVB rays is a broad spectrum sunscreen. So no matter what sunscreen you buy, make sure it says broad spectrum. And on the very front, it says protection from UVA and UVB rays, simple as that. What I hear from a lot of people is, I don't like sunscreens, they're kind of stinky and they're, you know, they're sticky and they leave a white cap and you know, I just don't want to. There is a sunscreen for everyone. It doesn't matter whether you have dry, dehydrated skin like me, you can have oily skin, combination skin, acne prone skin, whatever. There is a solution for everyone. So it does take a little bit of trial and error. There also seems to be a debate between chemical and mineral sunscreens. Chemical sunscreen act as kind of like a sponge and they soak up the rays where a mechanical is there to deflect and acts like a shield. Now chemical can be more irritating um, for people with problematic skin and sensitive skin. 
I personally don't have sensitive skin, so I use a combination of mineral and chemical and then products that have a combination of both types of filters in one product. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of an array. So I think it's just trial and error. If you know you have sensitive skin, then just steer yourself towards the mineral only and you should be fine there. Okay, before we get into my selection and favorite sunscreens, a few things to note. One is only go for SPF 30 and higher. There just isn't any point in doing anything less than that, right? Because you want to make sure you get the adequate coverage and sometimes people don't put enough on, so it's a good way of making sure that what you're putting on is going to give you the best shot. So SPF 30 and higher always. Usually in the summer I do a 50, but up to you. The second thing is the steps. It's always the last thing you do in your skincare and before you do your makeup. So do all your lotions and potions and put all that stuff on first. And then I generally leave my moisturizer to dry just for a couple of minutes and then I put on my sunscreen. And then what's really important is the next step, which is wait again. You should wait 15 to 20 minutes before you put on your makeup because that gives the SPF a chance to settle in and to prepare itself for the job that it has to do. So don't go straight from skincare to SPF to makeup. I do skincare, SPF, I go and I get a coffee. I take, you know, let the dog out and then I come back up and then I do my makeup. And then the last thing is the amount of product that you use. You need to be using a half a teaspoon for your face and for your neck. And I can guarantee you it's a heck of a lot more than you think it is. Most people just don't put enough product on. So the key, and to make it easy for yourself, you know, when you go and you put some of that stuff in your hand, you probably need to double whatever you have there. So often to make it easier, I'll do two different passes. I'll put on a first sort of probably a quarter of a teaspoon all over my face and neck, and then I go in with the second round because that way I'm making sure that I'm, everything's covered. You don't want to leave anything exposed. That's hairline and ears and all the way down the neck. And I also put more on the chest if I'm wearing a shirt like this where my chest is exposed, particularly because I'm using a lot of active ingredients. If you use exfoliants, if you use any retinoids, um, you need to make sure um, vitamin C is well, all of those things are going to make you more sensitive to sun. So you've got to make sure you're really, really covering things up. Okay, so now I'm going to walk you through my arsenal of products. Now, there's no rhyme or reason for why I reach for which one of these. They're all equally good under makeup. They're all equally good without makeup. So the only one I tend to use a bit more than others is the first one, which is what I tend to use when I'm on holidays. It's an SPF 50. It's probably the highest coverage out of all of them. Um, and it's probably the one I've repurchased the most so far. And this one is by Make Prem. This is their UV Defense Me Blu-ray Sun Fluid. And this is a whopper of a product as far as the amount that you get. This is 200 mils, 6.76 6 fluid ounces. It cost me about 26 pounds, which is an incredible value. It is sulfate free, it is paraben free. And as far as ingredients goes, this is a 15% combined um, all mineral sunscreen. It is zinc oxide and titanium oxide. Now it also includes a calming centella extract, which helps to refresh and soothe overheated skin. Now I've been using this one for years. Now, as far as the formulation goes, it's milk, it's really milky and it's very light. It's almost a runny texture to it and it soaks into your skin very well. You do have to work at it a little bit. As you can see, it's probably, it is the only one that I'm using that actually has, it's a white cast that's not tinted um, and you do have to work it in, but that's okay. It's worth it. It's a fantastic light, soft, it, it doesn't feel greasy at all and it completely um, disappears on the skin. It is perfect under makeup. So once you get that all rubbed in, what I've done here is shown you what it looks like right after I've applied the product, just so you can get a sense for the finish on it. And then on the right hand side, it shows you what it looks like after 15 minutes before I apply the makeup. So it looks like it's a tiny bit pale, but you know, I don't really mind, that's fine. Um, but it works on all skin types and all skin colors. The next one is by La Roche-Posay. It is their Anthelios Shaka Fluid um, SPF 50. Um, it is the tinted version. This is a chemical sunscreen, so for those who aren't interested in that, you can just bypass this completely. Um, it costs 18 pounds for 50 mils or 1.7 ounces. It is sweat, water, and sand resistant, and it also um, is fragrance free. Now, as far as the filters go, there is a huge mix of filters that they're using, and a number of them have been patented by L'Oreal, and it's just a long list, I'm not even gonna get into it, but really, really solid, good dermatology recommended um, filters in here to protect from the sun. The only downside to it is the second ingredient is denatured alcohol, which is surprising ordinarily. Not the best ingredient to be having in there, particularly if you have sensitive skin, but I'm telling you guys, this, this uh, there's no irritation with this whatsoever. I, and, and I know a number of people who have acne prone skin, who have irritated skin, 
love this product. And despite the fact that it was chemical and despite the fact that it had um, the alcohol in it, I went and gave it a try anyway. And I have to say, I love it. It's really, really good. Okay, again, a very runny consistency. This is tinted. Um, it is super lightweight. I mean, super lightweight. You actually almost can't feel it on your skin, um, which makes it easy to apply the right amount. And it just disappears. There's no greasiness, there's no pilling. Now they do say it's a matte finish. Um, I don't know if I'd say that to be perfectly frank, but it's perfect in that I like a little bit dewier. Um, I prefer more of a dewy finish as you can see here. It does dry back a little bit on the right side, but it is just perfect. It disappears. It's not there. There's no um, pilling under makeup and it feels great. It's gone. I mean, it's just an absolute dream. Okay, the next is quickly becoming a new favorite of mine. This one is by Dermatology. It is their Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46. Oh, I do like this so much. Now, the bummer is I had to buy it in the US and ship it over. And I paid 23 bucks, which is great, for 50 mils or 1.7 ounces. It is fragrance-free, paraben-free, sulfate-free, cruelty-free. This is a combination of mineral and chemical combined, which is great if you can get both. It has zinc oxide, it has optinosate, um, which could cause some irritation, but for me, it's an absolute dream. It also has sodium hyaluronate, which is a salt derivative of hyaluronic acid, which is said to actually be more effective at retaining and absorbing moisture. It has niacinamide, which is just one of those fantastic, wonderful ingredients, and it also has vitamin E. So this has become a quick favorite of mine. I've been reaching it for more and more um, as the summer months are coming through, and I cannot recommend it enough. So they say it's a universal tint, and it has no white cast, obviously, because it's tinted. Um, and I found this just to be the perfect color match. Um, now, I don't know if it could be considered a little bit on the darker side. I didn't think so, but I tend to lean darker anyway, but there's no white cast. It soaks right in. It has a lovely finish to it. It just feels soft and lovely, which is really shocking. Sunscreens have come a really, really long way. So you can see that um, it leaves a slightly dewy finish. Not a lot, but it's not greasy. Um, but it's exactly the finish that I like. And oftentimes this is perfect and I won't wear any makeup over it. I just think it looks fantastic. Okay, the next one is by Elta MD. And I lied when I said that the Prem was the one I've, I've actually repurchased more. It's, it's actually this one. I've been using this for years and years and years. It is their UV Clear Broad Spectrum SPF 46. So they say that it they say that it calms and protects acne prone skin. So this is good for everybody. This is an all mineral sunscreen. It cost me 29 pounds, I believe, uh, for 48 grams or 1.7 ounces. It is fragrance free, oil free, paraben free. Um, the ingredients are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Those are your UV filters. It also has niacinamide, which I love, hyaluronic acid, vitamin E, lots of skin loving, good stuff. So again, this is another lightweight option. It doesn't leave a white cast. Um, it might deliver a little bit more coverage than others, and um, which is fine, because again, this is perfect for no makeup days. It could be a little on the darker side. For me, it is absolutely perfect. I've seen people mix this with lighter or white versions just to sort of dilute the color a little bit, but I must have bought this 10 times in the past five or six years. It is glorious. It gives me the finish that I want, and I just think it's amazing, and I will continue to repurchase this over and over and over again. Okay, the last one is sort of an honorable mention, and I say that because it actually doesn't work for me, which is such a bummer, and I keep using it, hoping that my skin doesn't realize that. This one is by Heliacare. It is their 360 gel oil-free sunscreen protector dry touch. And I think that's sort of the problem. This is going to be great for oily skin. It's going to be fantastic for combination skin because it dries back, and it dries back a lot. So what happens for me, it's too drying. I end up getting these little dry patches that are really kind of around my nose in here. It's a function of my retinoid, tretinoin usage. So I need to constantly put hydrating products on my skin. And this isn't that. When they say oil-free, they ain't just whistling Dixie's me <laughs> saying this out. This will actually dry back beautifully. I don't wanna let it go. I keep like probably once a week, I put it on and go, oh, shoot, why did I do that? Because my skin doesn't really suit it, but I think it is a fantastic product. So this is a combination of mineral and chemical filters. It has three chemical filters and plus titanium dioxide. It has antioxidants, vitamins C and E plus green tea extract. It just has lots of lovely stuff for the skin. 
So they call it dry touch, which means that it dries back super quickly. So again, perfect for oily and combination skin. It's got a nice color to it. It actually smells really nice, I have to say. Ordinarily, I don't like smell, but I really, really do like this. And it goes on well, it goes on light. And I actually really like the way that it feels on my skin and easy to apply, disappears, all the stuff you want sunscreen to do. Except for me in about an hour's time, I just, my skin starts to feel parched. Um, it has a great finish after. I mean, there's no knock in it, except it's not really great for people with dry skin. So I still have it here. Chances are it's gonna go to one of my daughters because as you can imagine, imagine living in my house and not wearing sunscreen, you joking me. So it's something that I force them to do. <laughs> I think that with repetition becomes habit. Um, and this is probably gonna get kicked down to them. But I, I, again, can't recommend this enough. Oh, I didn't tell you the price. Oh, wow, that's expensive. <laughs> Only just looked it up. I kind of forgot that. So this is 50 mils. So a 50 mil product cost 37 euros is what I paid for it here in Ireland. So that's pretty pricey. Um, again, if, if this could be your holy grail for people with, um, with oily skin, it, it would be well worth the money. Um, yeah, that's pretty pricey. Okay, so there are two other products that I'm gonna throw in here because I think it's important to consider reapplication throughout the day. Now, I wouldn't use any of these products again throughout the day unless I'm on holidays at the beach or I'm not wearing makeup. But if I have any kind of makeup on, I don't really like to put sunscreens over my makeup. And that's why these little on-the-go products are divine. So um, I have two different options here. One is from Derma E Essentials and the other one is from Color Science. And both of these, this one's an SPF 30, this is an SPF 50. They go in your handbag and you can reapply as often as you want, which really should be every two hours. Um, and they're just great. Like literally, they have little brushes on them. You shake them to get the product in the end and then you just literally put this on. And these are fabulous products. I mean, they're, they're lifesavers, whether you're on holidays or you're just out and about and hopefully you remember to do it throughout the day if you can, if you can't, I understand. But if you have these in your purse, it's a good reminder and hopefully will we'll help establish those good habits. There's a big cost difference between these two. This one runs 19.50, this one runs 46.50. So big cost inferential. I prefer the 50, of course, because it's a higher coverage, but I have them both and I use them both. These are a good way to keep yourself protected throughout the day. Okay guys, that's it for me. That's my roundup of the sunscreens, the ones I'm using every single day. I hope you found this interesting. And again, if you like this video, I hope you'll subscribe and I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and hit that notification bell. So thank you again for joining. And if you have any particular loves out there, um, particular sunscreens that you really like, please do put those down in the comments below because I'm always trying out new things. These are just the ones I like. These aren't the ones I didn't like. So I'm always trying out new stuff because I think it's such an important part of taking care of ourselves and taking care of our skin. So. Thanks again for joining and I'll see you next week. Bye. That's enough. Oh, I didn't tell you the price. That's because I don't have it written here. <laughs> Should I go find it quickly, do you think? Mm.